Hey guys, this is the Hidden Matrix and welcome back to another video on the channel and in today's video we're going to be drawing Super Silver the Hedgehog so what you'll need for drawing is a pencil if you're doing this on paper, ruler for measurements and a rubber or a razor whatever you want to call it when you need to rub out any errors or any construction lines that I'll be doing in the drawing as long as you follow along with me. But if you're doing it on a digital software like I am, using a drawing tablet or just a monitor and use, using a mouse, whatever that you're using on a digital software program, then I've got the brush size at 10. This is on Clip Studio Paint, so it shouldn't be too much different to other digital softwares that you're using. You should still get the same line width uh, as I do when I draw things. The color of gray that I'm using, so it won't go any darker than that, is down here on the color wheel. And the tool that I'm using, the pencil tool, is a free pencil tool you can get off the store for Clip Studio Paint. So it's the official one they give. So I guess you could use the official one that you are given on your software program. But if you're able to download ones for free that you can get off a store that people create, then I guess just find the tool that works for you. You don't even have to use a pencil. At this stage, you could use a different color. You could use one of these... Uh, kind of things and just use that as your lines that's perfectly fine so enough said what we can do now is jump straight into the drawing so what I want to start off with when I'm drawing any character is the head so the way I like to structure that is just draw a circle so we're drawing a simple eclipse circle so this will represent the white part of the eyes inside of this the uh, mouth muzzle area where the nose is and everything and yeah, yeah, eye pupils, and this should be quite simple enough for you guys right now. So, yeah, just a simple circle like that will do. And what we'll do for the axis points of where the head is directing, we'll go and just do a line like this there. And that will represent the angle he's going and facing with his head when he's looking. So he's looking over to his left and we'll show that with this axis line. So this is like the angle that he's looking basically when you draw these lines. So if you were to draw anything, let's say if you were to, this is a terrible head, but if you were to go like this and like that, he's looking in kind of this direction. But with uh, silver, he's looking in this direction for axis points. So that's how they work. And for the body, what I like to do for this is just kind of doing a really wonky looking triangle, kind of rectangle mixed together. So this will represent kind of the body. Since I usually like to do beanie shapes, but the way that uh, silver's sort of facing on its body, it suited more for a rectangle looking triangle. It's, it's almost like a triangle since you just, uh, but you're just cutting off the top there really. So <laughs> there's no pointy top said it's like a straight top to it and it makes it kind of look like a rectangle because of the lines but the lines are going out a bit wide <laughs> but yeah it's just a simple shape really to start off with and then what I like to do is draw the middle point of my line for my leg so this will represent the middle of the leg so you can get an idea of the uh, the width and like the distance between the gap from the middle point to the edge of the leg so I'll have them like that for now. If I do need to adjust them, I will do that later, but I'm happy with this for now. And then what I'll do for the body fair is just like a simple kind of V-shape for the bottom of the uh, body fair. And then what I'll do is go up all the way to there, and then we can kind of go up here, and we can slightly cut across and down, and then we'll go a little bit above the circle line since it's slightly going above the bottom line of the muzzle so just keep that in mind since you'll have bits of fur pointing above it if you have a look at this line you'd see if you zoom it in kind of thing there it's an example then for the arm so the shoulder point will be around about there so for the arm what we'll do is we'll basically get the middle of where the shoulder is and draw the middle point of where the arm is so you have an idea there and imagine the shoulder would be round about there on the other side of silver so you'd go down and draw the middle point over there like that and we'll make sure it just looks like it's a bit better that line there we go something like that that should do okay 
I'll darken any lines if you guys can't see them that better since uh, they look fine on um, my drawing tablet but on the uh, software when I'm recording it doesn't always uh, give you a good tone of line sometimes so I'll just darken it a little bit better just to show lines a bit easier for you guys. So guys, once we've got something like this, what I'll do now is the feet. So basically for the shoes, what I'll do is just end off where I want the leg to finish and where the shoe will start. So this is kind of uh, the sort of the yellow parts that you'll see on his wrist is also on the uh, top of his shoes. So to do this, what we're going to do is just go all the way around and it's kind of like a really sort of like a circle oval shape looking thing so this represents the top of it of uh, this bit of yellow that we're about to do kind of like cylinder looking thing it's like half a cylinder since you're cutting it half imagine like put them together and you'll have two cylinders <laughs> to make uh, to be used for both shoes so um, yeah just ending that bit off that line over this side and yeah that should be okay and with uh, this it'll give us a good idea of the distance between the legs so it'll give us a good idea if we need to adjust things since you don't want the gap to be too big but you don't want it to be too small because when you come to um, making the legs wider and you know the lines you want a decent gap in between there between the legs separation kind of thing so you want to keep that in mind so we've got something like this and what I'll do is I'll just make sure that that line is a little bit it, don't want it going too far up since then you want to keep the curve still so it doesn't look like it's been too small you want to make it kind of like that so that'll be okay and then what I'll do is I like to draw the middle point of the leg so you've got something like that and then something like that to finish that bit off there it's going down and then what we can do represent the bottom of the shoe and just go back up like this and it will just have a diagonal line like that there so it's almost like an arrow pointing in on that side and then on the other side we're basically doing almost the opposite so what we'll do is we'll go from here and eventually it will the curve will end and it will go in more so instead of going out we're going in now so like that so you're just rounding that first line off so representing that his leg is kind of facing forwards from going at an angle to sort of pivoting his foot a bit more forward and then so we've got something like that and I'm happy with so what I'll do is I like to section off the middle point like that and that'll be okay for now and then what we'll do is basically go and do the second leg uh, shoe so going with this what we'll do is basically the same kind of thing it doesn't matter that's going into this line right now it, it will be sorted later on and it can give you an idea of where the missing lines would be later on when you're doing it as well. This might not be the finished uh, circle anyway, since uh, depending on how thick your leg is, it might be slightly different. So um, this just gives you a better idea right now though. So it's, it's okay, it's perfectly fine. So I've got something like this. What I'll do now is I will go down two sides like that. I'm gonna make sure you, to keep this leg at an angle since it's going this way and then what we'll do is just go and curve that bottom line down like that and then once we've got something like that we can simply go with this line since it will connect into there like that and then what we'll do next is we'll go on the uh, what we'll do actually with the middle points this is actually quite a handy line that I drew unintentionally and <laughs> so you go down like that and then something like that will be okay and then we can go from uh, I'd say around here and do the uh, bottom of the shoe curve. So this will curve off the bottom of the shoe. And let's go and do the outline. Up, so we'll go with a line in like that. And it goes up like that. And then it's the middle point kind of thing over there. And yeah, just something like that will be okay. For now, uh, things will be adjusted probably later on since this to me looks like it will have a few adjustments but this is the basic kind of construction that we're going for right now so it's, it's perfectly fine so something like this and you're ready now to kind of develop the head a bit more now so what I like to do for the head is start off with the muzzle so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go like this start from the right and we'll go right to left so going uh, from starting here you're curving up and then you're slowly gonna gradually curve 
down but until like the middle point of the uh, this side of the head you're gonna then curve back up and this will represent the edge of the muzzle so going like that you're curving back up and then it will curve back in like that so you have an idea of how the muzzle will look and remember the bottom of the line does get cut off by the body fur as well so keep that in mind when you're drawing this and we can go down like that so this is a little line and then you start curving it in like that there so we've got something like that and now what we can do is what what I like to do for the bottom of the eyebrow is to draw a line and that represent how far we need to go down between the gap of the muzzle and the white eye and it's a very small gap so keep that in mind it's not it's just not touching uh, the muzzle so it's a slight little white gap it's a bit hard to see but if you imagine the bit of white around here and it's not touching but what I can do is get rid of some old axis lines and then just improve the lines I had before and then you see a bit clearer there is just a small gap there we're going with so we've got something like that what we'll do is we'll go from this side going upwards so one, once you get to around here what you do is you'll go a little bit more outwards now and that rep start representing the first spike on the front of his head and silver spikes are really <laughs> quite complex actually when you look at them but I'll try my best to break them down you might need a little bit of constructions and sorting out but I'll try my best since uh, <laughs> that's all I can do and so we've got something like this for the eye so a unique thing about Silver and his eyes is that he's got a bit of black on the outline on the, the edge of his eyes so what we can do is we've got a, a bit of a line we're just extended and then what we'll do is we'll go from here so you're going wide and you're slowly gradually curving it in but you're not uh, curving it in perfectly to connect to the other line there's a bit of like a line uh, gap in between that so we've got something like that and then what I'll do is just curve the line a little bit more there and then we can you, you can fill it in if you want to now but it just gives you a better idea if you fill it in so you can sort of see the lines that you're going for there and then what we'll do on the other side is we'll draw in the other white part of the eye so going up to this line and then it will sort of do it a little curve and then just going and going back in like that the nose will cut off this eye a bit and what I'll do is get rid of some of the lines in there so it's a little bit easy to see so like I was saying the nose will cut off this a little bit so this line we're doing it doesn't really matter too much right now with how long you need to do it and like drawing the whole line doesn't matter too much it'll be okay but we can keep it uh, like that for now so that's okay there um, what I'll do is the axis point I will just rub it out a little bit since now we'll draw the the gap between the two eyebrows so going up uh, like that you can see the the frown and, and sort of the, the the bend marks and the difference between the uh, the eyebrows in the frown and the in the expression so now we've got that what I'll start doing is I will start drawing in the the spikes for the the front of silver's head so with this what we'll do is we'll go from the edge on the bottom of the spike and slowly gradually curve this upward to a point around about there hopefully I've got enough space in the top of uh, my page I might need to shrink the drawing down a little bit so just before drawing your spikes it's always good to you know keep an eye on uh, the space you've got above you so that you're not drawing two squash spikes because you do want his spikes to have a bit of uh, length to them really you don't really want them to be like this you want to kind of double that kind of size so yes yeah, so, and imagine how wide you're going with your spike on the like let's say if you go in uh, this this long on uh, this spike you want to make sure that you go in the same kind of length on the top spike and not go in small so then you you want to keep the consistency really in your spike lengths just keep that in mind so now that we've got that what we'll do is for the start of the second spike I notice it's in the middle of this eyebrow if you just draw a line up a better line than these that's why you use a ruler and then you would eventually go around here and curve this line so this will be represent the top of the uh, next spike and it does have an ear in in this second spike so I will uh, go draw that in as well just going around like this and then we'll go and curve this in eventually 
and a good thing to keep in mind is the end of where you finish the spike it will finish just inside that black part of the eye remember that so it won't finish on the outside of this line it'll finish just inside the line of uh, the black sort of bit of the eye we did before so something like that and then drawing in the uh, ear so simply a triangle and what we'll do is slightly just point a little bit above the line we did that's perfectly fine and then we're going to go and curve it off like that there and what I'd like to do is just bring that line in a little bit more because it's not going past the uh, black line remember that so keep the ear and the second um, end of the uh, spike inside the black area so don't go outside <laughs> go inside with it really that's a, a kind of the idea that I'm saying right so we've got that there so what we'll do now is just a triangle uh, within a triangle simple stuff going on here and yes yeah, so that's that represents the ear and I'll uh, just rub out the the line cutting in between the line we did so you can separate the ear from the spike so got something like this going on right now and it's it's okay for now I'm I say I'm not uh, <laughs> complaining too much about it right now I'm happy with it but looking at the space I'm gonna have for the top spike I probably will just shrink it down a little bit because I don't want the top spike to be too small and squashed I want to kind of give it uh, length so by doing that I need to uh, just shuffle things a little bit just move things down a little bit too much like I've been saying in the drawing you might just need to adjust things it's always like that with drawings but now that we've got but what you can do with uh, silver's uh, spikes if it makes it easy if you can you can kind of draw the middle uh, points kind of thing and then what you'd do is you would go on the outside it's just similar to how I do the uh, the the arm so or the, the legs basically going on the outside kind of thing you'd have a, an idea of what's going on there it's, it's terribly rough and terrible but uh, <laughs> it's just an example that if, if it's easier for you to draw a middle line point for things first then do that but for me I feel like I don't want things to be like I don't want to draw middle points and then end up being wrong since it's very hard to judge the spikes so I just feel like I'll just go all out and uh, just draw them like this instead so we've got this what it is doing right now is it's starting from here and then curving out and it will eventually curve in to a point and I feel like it might be a little bit too long but it should be okay but around here you'll then start with a point and then it will curve slightly in but then it's going to go slightly curving out and then eventually it will curve in and what I'll do is since I feel the spike is a little bit just a little bit too uh, thick right now I, I don't really like the uh, width in this spike I will just go and adjust that a little bit and then going with this line just trying to curve it off a little bit better there a good point to help out is I guess the uh, sort of the, if you do a line that's this will help me out as well if you do a line you can see uh, that's where the spike will end so when curving it off you have an idea of where it'll end as well so that'll just make it a little bit easier when drawing uh, this spike and I, I will go and try and improve it a little bit better now so yeah I'll just rub out a few things and you have a, a better line a better construction and then I'll just thicken lines and make them uh, look like the finish line something like that like I saying it's very very tough to judge things and uh, yeah it's just always trial and error with anything you do it's very hard to be uh, perfect and you never really want to be a perfectionist with uh, drawing since you'll be there forever but I uh, try my best to <laughs> uh, not spend too long on each thing but now we've got something like that what I'll do is I'll rub out this uh, guideline since you guys know now what you need to do with that line and uh, so going from this what we need to know is the spike will end off around there so we can use this line uh, as a construction this time and go in on the outside this time we will curve it and then eventually like that and it's just going outwards and then going back in with this and then yeah so I'll just get rid of the line and then you can have a look and you kind of see what's going on here and what I will do is I'll slightly just 
since it, to me it looks a little bit too thin now I'm gonna slightly just widen it out a little bit just to make it look a little bit better and make it fit with the drawing so guys I just did a little adjustments on uh, this spike over here and so I just improved that a little bit since I was a little bit unhappy with it but it, it's a little bit better now but just a few little adjustments there and you probably will be able to notice when uh, skipping time and everything and just seeing the, the transition that I did so with uh, the end of this spike what it will do it, it should eventually sort of level itself uh, with uh, this so what we'll do is just slightly go down a little bit more and that'll be okay so yeah that that was uh, the end for that one and now so going for this side what we'll do is go on the outside of this and it's going to be curving up like that and eventually it's going to be going outwards and then back in and this one has the ear on it so keep that in mind uh, the left ear is on this one and what I'll do is just improve that top line since it's a little bit too straight I want to go a little bit more up with this one and then since it go cuts into it we go in like that and eventually it will go in curving like that so we've got something like this there for that ear and what I'll do is just improve this line over here since uh, the thickness in the ear needs to uh, be a little bit more out wider so bring this one out a bit more and then something like that and then you can kind of get the idea of how I'm going with this and then I will just quickly go and improve and clean up this part here so guys now that you've got something like that and cleaned it up there that is the front of the silver spike so now that I'm happy with that I'm going to move on to the uh, big spike that's on the back of his head and there's only one showing in this picture so uh, keep that in mind when drawing this so you won't see one behind it so with this what I'll do is we'll just draw the sort of like where everything sort of curves off of the head and what I'll do is actually just bring that top line in a little bit more since you want to kind of make it look a little bit more rounder there and that look should be a little bit better and so something like that to start off with and then what you do is going to curve around at the top going inwards and then back up with that curved line and then going around uh, to curve this back in over to let's say around here and what I did is I went a little bit too far down with that so uh, going and cutting across that to just improve that error get rid of that error there and improve the line that's something like that and then what I'll do is just go around just curving it off a little bit more and just uh, making it look right so yeah something like that and and so we'll then curve it there and that's a little bit better uh, looking at the spike what I can do now is just widen it a touch at it since it is quite smaller than the rest of the other spikes and yeah you want to kind of keep consistency with all spikes so just curving off that spike and you should eventually have something like this so i'm happy with that for now that'll be perfectly fine so now that we've got that we'll start developing the body so we have our construction lines and what we're going to do is start drawing in uh, the arm now so going from this line we're going to go and do the outside of the well the inside line this side over here and then we will do the top line so going to there and then we'll go from here and basically something like that and then I'll probably keep it there I might shorten out the arm depending on if I feel it's too long or not but uh, for now it should be okay so yeah just something like that will do and then so with this right arm what we'll do is line like that I'll just curve that top bit a little bit more inwards and then with this line over here on the top of the arm going in like that there and we can then just curve it off and then for the leg we're going out like this and we'll eventually so it's, it's a little bit diagonal it's going so it goes in and then slightly out so if you're starting from the bottom you go out and in and then 
on either side we go and connect that up there and just have that line across over here to separate the middle and the separation of the legs and then uh, with this you would have sort of a line and then go around about there for that bottom of that leg and then once we've got that we'll start adding in uh, the top of the leg I might slightly move things around just looking at this now I, I need a little bit more of a thicker leg looking at this it's, it looks a little bit too small to me and then with the positioning of the arm the top arm so I will just prove that a little bit there so going with this go out a little bit wider this time and we should have something we're happy with eventually something like that will do and then so going back to the left leg we're going with the outside now so what we're going to do is we're going to start curving the body and sort of showing the angle of the back now so with the arm what we want to make sure that we do is we don't connect the arm to the back there's a line a gap and that's the difference you want to make sure of in drawing this so it's kind of arching inwards and then go the line down and then go that leg out so it's kind of like going in then down and then out something like that for the back of there so once we've got something like that what we can do is now add in the uh, the shoulder spikes so with this we go from the outside uh, so the bottom of this uh, the bottom of the shoulder spike and so going down and then curving back up and then you have a bit of it showing up there but, but with this what you have is just do a line across and we'll come back to uh, that part later since that'll be a bit of the body thing we can do now is just do something like that for now but we'll have a few uh, a little bit more details to do there so with something like this and yeah I'll just I want to curve this on it, arch it up a little bit. Might look the line was looking a little bit too straight for me, so just trying to arch it up, give it more of a curve to the top of that line, and, and then we'll get something we're happy with. So going back to uh, this uh, arm, what I'm going to do is slightly do a few adjustments. So what I'll do is the previous line we'll get rid of. Since now I'm happy with the uh, leg that we have, I can start creating the right gap t between the arm and the leg. So just a few adjustments needed so the top of this will go out a little bit more and it will widen the arm a little bit and you'd have a sil similar arm um, kind of uh, length and width but not exactly the same since they're both at different angles one's kind of showing the bottom uh, well the, the top of the arm and then one's showing like the side so yeah just keep that in mind so now we've got this what we'll do is just a little bit of a tricky part since uh, now we're going to be drawing the uh, sort of the wrists uh, part of the, the hands and these can be a little bit difficult to get the right sort of perspective but um, now we've got the right kind of position for the leg it should be a little bit easier and I have had a little bit of a practice run with this drawing so kind of have a little idea of uh, what's going on so what I like to do before I draw the the hand is I like to go and sort of pretend that it's not there and then you kind of see the shape that you're creating around the wrist just to see if it looks right and uh, to see if you're drawing things right and happy with it so what I'll do is just slightly bring that in a little bit more and then get rid of those lines and should have something similar to this to start off with for this and then what we can do is go with a line up and we'll, uh, just cut it across say a little bit more down actually and this will represent uh, the thumb so go up like that and then we go across and then it's sort of like a sort of a really uh, wonky uh, rectangle and then what we'll do is go with sort of a V shape sort of arrow shape going up and this will represent sort of the bend in the closed fist since it's got two hands that are closed fists for his hands posture and everything hand shape so keeping that in mind so we've got something like that and then what we'll do is we'll curve it in eventually and it's going from here and then what I'll do I can slightly just improve the lines by going I'd say around about there with that there so I don't want to get too far out with this 
and then we can get rid of everything inside of it so it's seen a little bit better and then I like to sort of show that this is the top of the bend for the fingers and then yeah you just go with the uh, kind of the outside area bit there for something like that just to bring it out a little bit more and we can also go with something like that as well it's almost looking like Knuckles' hand almost <laughs> so you got something like that for the uh, right hand and then for the uh, going back to the wrist there's just a little bit of a pattern in, in there so just going with this two symmetrical lines in there and that's like the glow part of the wrist in the middle there for something like that there and what I'll do is just curve off this a little bit more there so you don't want to go in too far out you want to curve it in a little bit more in the end so with this uh, left hand doing something a little bit similar you want to try and make sure that you keep things sort of the same size with things so when going out too wide you don't want to uh, go too far so with this go down to about here and then we'll curve this one in a bit more and this one's a little bit more trickier I think but uh, I'll try and get this one right best I can so with this we'll then curve this on a little bit more it's a lot of rough trying to figure things out kind of thing and you know like I was saying I like to do a, a simple kind of without the hand first for the wrist to try and get the perspective right and this is like the middle glow part as well so you can get helps if you put this in as well I guess so you can see the gap between everything so to know if you've got the right gap and the right lines so with something like this what I'll do is now just cut across because with the thumb kind of goes across and cuts the line and so going out as far as there and then it would go across and then go back down and say to about there and that'll be okay and then with the uh, the bottom of the part of the hand goes on around like this and what I'll do is just improve this line over here a little bit better and so we've got something like this we'll do the outline of the hand and so you can get an idea of how things are going so just go outwards with this and then and once we've got the shape the, the kind of shape where we'll look at the size between them and then uh, we'll decide whether or not to shrink things or not which I will definitely probably be shrinking this hand since it looks massive doesn't it compared to uh, the guideline that we had before with the uh, right hand and the left hand's looking a little bit uh, <laughs> too <laughs> too big for, for the body so <laughs> I, I might uh, improve the uh, left hand uh, the, the, the right hand size as well but just shrink the left hand just a little bit so uh, things kind of look better on the eye <laughs> and with the uh, body's uh, size so going like that something I guess it's a little bit better for the wrist that size and then uh, what I'll do is I'll go and lasso the the hand shape and we'll shrink that up a little bit more and that'll make it a little bit more I guess a little bit uh, right for the size of the the, the body so something like that and then uh, we'll just get the lines improved that we cut off and then connect them back on and then just sort that out on the end and then going back to the bend on this hand and we'll go this is where it sort of ends and then just something like that and that'll be okay I guess something like this and then once we've got something like that what I'll do like I was saying is I'll just quickly go and improve the right hand so that right hand is looking a little bit better now so I'm happier with that and that should be all good and what we'll do now is we can slightly just readjust these uh, legs now since we uh, well the the shoes I'm sorry for the legs since we've now drawn the legs we can now just slightly just adjust things to uh, the, the body size so we're going with this what I can do is just get that bottom line a little bit better get those lines and get rid of the middle point in this leg now all that construction we don't need of course I will be uh, cleaning things up as I go and I'll be definitely cleaning things off at the end especially so I'll be doing that off camera though since I don't want to waste you guys time that's quite a uh, self-explanatory thing to do cleaning your drawing right so with the legs what I'll do with this front leg is to slightly widen uh, this uh, yellow part of the the shoe so with the top we'll widen it slightly just because there's a little bit more now 
that we need since the uh, the leg uh, took most of the space we drew before so it's nothing too much of adjustment since we still haven't drawn the detail in here so it's it's not like we've destroyed a drawing and it's still fine so just widen that out a little bit more and that should be okay and then what we can do with this side is just get rid of these lines over here and this leg kind of it it will cut into it about there since that's the what we didn't get right before is it cut in slightly over this side and went into it a little bit more when you want to go a little bit out wider and then so with this got that and then we'll curve it around like that and so we've got something like that over here and that's fine and we'll curve the top off a little bit better and I'll rub out things so you can see it a little bit more clearly and then we can round off a little things over there and so that bit and that's cool so with that what we'll do is we'll now start drawing in a little bit more detail and improving things so I will uh, zoom in as well so we can focus on this part the shoes so with the shoe what I like to do with this is we'll start off simply with uh, this kind of uh, pattern where it's, it's got a bit of red I don't really know what you call it it's not it's not a buckle I was I was going to use the word buckle but it's kind of more just like a, just, just a nice little uh, pattern to the shoe but this will be where the white bit is so with this white bit go over line and eventually go down and it bend like that but what we can do is since over here you've got sort of like fold markings in the shoe so with a line over here and then a line over that side then go to the end of the line we did over here at the end end of the shoe and you're gonna curve out like that and I'll show kind of like fold in the shoe and then to connect the white bit there just a simple arrow shape go pointing to the right for that and then what I'll do over on this side is just rub out a few lines just so you can see this next bit a little bit easier. So with this, we'll sort of curve it in like that. And around this point, we'll have it curved back outwards and something like that will do. And we can then curve the top uh, and uh, separate the white from the uh, green part of the shoe now that we're about to do. So to separate the blue as well, that the navy-ish blue part of the shoe, we curve this top line and I'll just slightly go wider with this and we'll make a few lines on the outside that we're using proper lines so go in with this and then like that we'll do and yeah I'll just get rid of a few lines that I don't want right now on that side as well so something like this and we will go around uh, the shoe will kind of curve around the front and then it will connect all the way over to here. And I'll just darken off that line. I can darken this line off there also. And yeah, I'll just clean up things so you guys aren't getting too mixed up with any detail we don't need since we can get rid of the old line. Don't need any more. So we've got that. All we need to do now is add in a sole to this sh uh, left shoe. To do that, we'll get rid of all these unneeded lines and then we'll just fix them the ones we cut into. And now we've got this, what we'll do is just above the, the gap between the blue and the green, we go slightly above that and we start with a line going out and then it will go like that and uh, with a little diagonal line and curve just round and then you're just basically doing a symmetrical line to that top line and yeah so that's how you want to you want you want to try and keep the 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 gap between the leg the same uh, throughout with your line so you don't really want to be cutting in like that when trying to do it so just try and keep a consistent line and distance between the shoe and the sole so yeah this would be all gray this part over here and remember that uh, when it come to coloring there will be let's imagine uh, the, there's like a top side so there's like you got the side over here but then the top line kind of thing and that'll just give you like a 3d effect and it shows like the angle 
so that's okay for now so now that we've got that and I'm happy with we can just get rid of a few lines and we'll be ready for the last shoe to do and that'll be silver being able to walk then <laughs> or run or levitate really you know uses uh, telekinesis powers <laughs> So around this uh, kind of curved line of uh, the second shoe, there's, there's a line that we have on the shoe, which is sort of the separation between the blue and uh, the white strap on his shoe. So, um, well, it's, I won't really call it a strap, it's just more of a pattern really. And it's not like it's, not like it's a sonic strap really on a shoe, because <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not connected by a buckle. But um, so you go with a line like this, curving it down, and then once we've got that, what we can do is, I will just get rid of the middle lines. Because now, we're gonna be doing this shape we did before that's uh, in the white part of the strap. So going with this, and it's a line across, and then you're gonna go and connect it up to that line to connect, diagonally connect it, and you have a point, and then you've got like a little bit of a gap, and it looks like a triangle, and then, um, we will do basically the exact same thing inside of it, just like that really, just something simple there for that one. So once we've got this, what we'll do is we'll go, where, where it bends, you want to curve outwards. So um, for the middle point where it bends, where it shows a new line. So if we go with this and that, you'd have a curve there in the middle and just rub out the, the bend. And since this will uh, show like the crease in the shoe like we did before, and so going up like that and then with this one we're going to go slightly up and then we'll go down with that there and it'll nearly meet uh, the the line that uh, uh, separates the white from the blue so just going a little bit further with that there something like that and we then since we've got a little bit more we can do with there that's okay and that is uh, fine and i'm happy with that part of the shoe and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go slightly downwards and draw a little bit more of the, the white part of the shoe. So with that, something like that there, and eventually it will connect to this part of the shoe here. And once you've got something like that, what we'll do now is we'll start sort of curving off the, the blue section from the green section. And what we'll do is just notice it's a little bit, uh, I, I've gone down a little bit too far, so I'm going to bring it up a little bit, that line, as I don't want the uh, left shoe going too far down below the, the line we did before for the uh, like the bottom of the sole. You don't want that going below, as it's it, the left shoe is more down than uh, the uh, the right shoe. If you look at it, as look at the gap, really. Let's keep that in mind so you don't want your right shoe going further down since his knees bending up so he's lifting his leg up higher than his left as his left foot is his planted foot where he's standing and what he's using to balance and then yeah he's kind of in a levitation pose because he's in his super form though so it's getting rid of all these old lines then with this what we'll do is we'll have the curve starting around here with that and uh, then we'll just curve off everything and so going with here, and then it would bend inwards. What I might do, if, I, if I'm not happy with the length of this right shoe, what I might do is I might just extend uh, the uh, left shoe a little bit just to make this look a little bit better. And you know, I'm thinking since I probably will do that, I'll do that now, so then I can do it with you guys. And make things a little bit easier so just all I'll be doing is just moving it down a little bit more so we have more of a space to go with here so we got that and what I'll do now is just connect those lines get the right tool and connect those lines in there and just connect that as well so it's something like that and then what we'll do is we'll now draw in uh, the sole of the right shoe. So going with this, what we do is we will go out like that, and then we're gonna go down, 
uh, across with a bit of a diagonal line and then we'll connect this so it's, it's kind of similar like I was saying you're always symmetrical, uh, symmetrically uh, doing uh, the top line like the bottom line so keeping things consistent like you did on the left shoe and imagining that there's a top to that making it look 3D so we've got that and what I'll do is just improve that line so bring it out a little bit more over this way and then we can have a look and then decide if I need to do a few improvements and having a look at it I probably will do a few improvements uh, so I'll be back with you guys quickly and then I'll tell you guys what I did just to improve things a little bit so guys I did a little adjustments to the uh, the shoes like I was saying and all I did really was uh, just uh, move this part over here up a little bit more and so I could have a little bit more of a green part of the shoe space so I can make that green area just a little bit bigger so that's just it really and a slight improvement to the soles I just slightly uh, it was out a little bit more down so I just moved it up a little and made it a little bit more straighter and a little bit more of a curve to it and I'm happier with how this is looking now so all I need to do now is just work on the ankle parts of the shoe where well like the, the top of the yellow parts so what I'm gonna do now is just get rid of a few lines I don't want and then so when we've got all that area that we're fine with we'll draw in the pattern of the shoe uh, for this part and it's going to be sort of like a line across and then you go down and go across again and then you go back up and a line across and you're going to do that on the bottom as well so make it symmetrical exactly the same uh, just like this and then like that to finish that bit off there I'm happy with that so once you've got that and this we can now move on to the other shoe so what I'm going to do is just prove this top line as well and we've got something like this we'll a little bit easier for us just to sort things out really so something like that that do fine and then so with this gap what we're doing is basically the same kind of pattern again it's a, a slightly different angle this time keep that in mind uh, when doing it so going like that with that there and then the same the bottom you want to kind of make sure that the line isn't going to touch the, the bottom of the, the yellow you want a gap of yellow between everything so I'll just rub out the gap because you don't want, it, don't want it to be too close to it of course so having a look at this what we need to do next is start drawing in the eyes the nose and the mouth and then we can move on to the body fur and uh, we can draw in the tail and uh, the arms and what I'll do is quickly I just realized that's a little bit I don't like things I'm going to cut in through. <laughs> there we go, just saw that and clean that up. So giving a little bit of life to Silver now and drawing in his eyes. So with this line, what I did before is it helps with knowing um, the bottom of the eyes. For me, this is good, a good guideline for where the bottom of the eyes is for this axis line that we, we did really early on. So with this, what we're going to do now is, is we'll curve off the eye like that then inside the eye we're basically going to do the same again but we're going to fill it in this time and call it black and then I will later on go and I, I like to erase out a little white circle when I do it instead of drawing a circle first so with this what we'll do is go like that and then curving it up and what I might do is just widen it out a little bit on this side and yeah just improve this a little because there's not much of the eye showing something like that and then basically the same inside for that happy with so we'll going back to the first eye what we'll do now is sort of erase things out I might need to change the size of my eraser to make it a little bit easier but this is okay for now I don't really want to go outside the, the black area and we'll just get rid of the line I did. That should be okay. And then going uh, to this one, I will probably just, uh, I'll put 25 for this one since it's a lot smaller. A little bit more difficult to judge this one right. But I think I'll get it. Uh, nearly there, so just bring it down a little bit more. 
and then just improve that top line and make sure that I'm on the right tool of course so I'm not rubbing things out when I'm trying to draw so that line is okay and then what I'll do is just shrink and down the, the circle a little bit have a look at that and yeah that's okay but what I will do is slightly just narrow this one down a little and then I'll be happier with it and then I can go back to the rubber tool and just give that a bit better shape there so having a look at that yeah I'm happier with that and that looks a lot better for the eyes so now that we've got that we'll draw in the nose and a good idea to know where the nose is is looking at uh, the middle point of uh, like the frown so if you drew a line down you would see the middle point of where the nose would uh, start so starting from this circle here and what I'll do is make sure the circle's not too big as you it does narrow inwards when drawing it so go with a line we'll go across like this with a line and it's going outwards so it's going further than the uh, the white part of the eye and it's going to go and curve inwards so this line over here and then we're going to go in like that and eventually we will connect it in and then we'll get rid of all the lines inside something like this and then what I'll do is I prefer to draw in the circle for this point since uh, well the glow on the, the nose to show it is healthy uh, as uh, it just, it's a little bit easier and it's a lot less rubbing out <laughs> so with this we'll color it in as well it's an option you can take if you want to color it in right now simple shade it in and then I'll just improve the outline of that just make sure there's no lines kind of making it look off so I'm gonna look at that and then you can kind of see what it's looking like now so I'm happy with that uh, very happy so what I'm going to do now before I draw the mouth is I'm going to draw in the top of the uh, the fur the body fur so to do that what we're going to do is we're going to start off at the middle point so the middle of this we're going to go and sort of separate things here to show there's a bit of a gap in the bend and then we're going to go up with a little bit of like a really uh, stretched out M shape so going up here like that and it's going to eventually go down you can see kind of a really weird looking M shape <laughs> and then what we'll do is we'll go with a bigger bit of uh, Body fur is showing now, so a lot bigger here it is, so there's a gap there as well. I'll just rub out, since that line is a little bit too thick for me, showing the end of the uh, the muzzle. And also I will just rub out any gaps for drawing fur, so then we're not, we're not getting uh, lines mixed up. So going with this next one, it's kind of just like a load of triangles when drawing in uh, body fur. And then we go to this last one goes out like that uh, on this side and then curves inwards and then what I'll do is just get rid of any lines that cuts into like that and that should be okay uh, for that one so now what we'll do is we'll go on back to the top and what we'll do is we'll start drawing in the top bit of the fur so this bit of the fur it will the point will uh, be in line with the start of the nose and it'll go down and then so once you got that what we'll do is we'll then go across and eventually it will go outside so like i was saying we had a bit of the uh, body fur on the outside so this is what we're doing right now so get rid of a few lines so we can see what we're doing this is going outside the nose, uh, well, outside the muzzle even, not the nose, and um, but is uh, is by the nose. <laughs> well, obviously, it's outside, but I don't really mean it in that way. So, <laughs> so once we've got something like that, we can then now uh, we'll go across like this. I might need to move the arm. Looking at this, just uh, just slightly move it downwards. I probably will do that since uh, looking at the space. So if we go back. And look at that I definitely will move uh, the the arms so with this all you need to do if you're on clip studio paint is get your lasso tool and move it around where you want to get things and then once you've got like that we'll just press that and move that down slightly 
just until we're happy with uh, the gap that we've got. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of having a look at this and thinking we might need to uh, just, it's the gap between the, the arm and everything, got to remember that. So having a look at this, I, I, I will have a look until I'm happy with it. So guys, I had to just do a little bit of body shuffling and sort of, what I had to do is move the head up a little bit more since the mouth had been a little bit sort of, uh, a little bit too small. So I had to just uh, move and make sure that I had a, a, a better space in the muzzle. And so moving out this arm a little bit more, so I have a little bit more space and adjusting that shoulder spike. It's a lot of trial and error since I caused uh, my own problem there really. So hopefully you guys won't have the same problem, but um, yeah, I had a little problem there, but it, it was an easy fix in the end, thank goodness. So with this, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to now sort of separate the arm from the fur. So this is the top of the fur and I'm going down and what I'll do is get rid of the shoulder stuff now so I'm not getting uh, confused with lines as well. So I'll get rid of the shoulder circle. So with this, what I'm going to do is just move this up a little bit more and so go and curving this down and in like that. And then what you'll do is you go outwards with a line and I'm gonna go and curve that. And, can, and what I'll do is just improve that line. So what we're doing is curving this in and connecting it to the point, which is the end of the body fair over here. So yeah, it's something like that. I'm happy with it. I'll do is just improve that out of line there. The outer line is sorted. So I'm happier with that. And now that's looking a lot better and we can get rid of the old uh, line over there. And you have a better idea now of how the body fair is looking. And now we can actually draw in the mouth. So uh, going with this, uh, I probably will, you know, I could keep that line. I just need to adjust it. So you have a little bit, I just want to put it diagonally down a little bit more really. So I probably will do that. Just move it down a little. Something like that will do. And then what I can do is sneak a little trick just to make it have more of a point. It just slowly erase away at the end of it just to point it down a little bit more and give it a little bit more of a curve and a little bit more pointy edge to it. So you're not having a, a, a thick line all the way through and it gives it a little bit more nicer look to it. So that's okay for the mouth. And remember, it's just above uh, this uh, bit of the, the body fur as well. So now we've got that, what we can do is add in the tail spike. So with this tail spike, what it's doing is we'll go from here. So it's going downwards and then it's gonna go across like that and just be a slightly uh, further across than uh, the, the point on the, the shoulder spike. So what we'll do now is we'll curve it back in like that. It's basically doing the same line on the bottom that we did on the top like this. And I'm happy with that. That is perfectly fine. And what we'll do is just improve that line on the leg also. Uh, yeah, something like that will do. So having a look at this, all I believe we need to do now is add in the the hands, of uh, fingers in the hands. So having a look at this, what we'll do is we'll start on the right side and then go to the left. So with this, what I will do is I'll start over here. This and I might need to improve the top line in terms of extending it out a little bit wider, depending on if I feel like I've got enough space or not. So going with this, out, and I feel like I've already got the top line really happy uh, how I wanted it really. <laughs> Just a few little tweaks there, but it's basically how I needed it, and I'm happy with that. And I also curve off the next line as well. So this is the knuckle for the next finger we're bending and it will go into the thumb a little bit so we've got a little bit of a curve as well on the end and get rid of a few lines so you can see it a little bit better as we can also curve off the top a little bit I guess as well for that and curve off this bit as you, you get quite a lot of curves on fingers with the folds and the bends of the finger and so we've got that what we'll do next is we'll go 
and do a line basically doing the same again like that and then you've got two fingers there we we'll finally go to this one and what we'll do is slightly extend the thumb down a little bit more and we'll just get rid of the old line and what we'll do is go up and down over here so look at this what we've got next is this line on the knuckle yeah so it's bending that bit there and then you got the next bend which will go all the way around so just get seeing the dark line there is the one I'm using and get rid of all the old lines as well so we don't get confused something like that would be okay and then what I'll do is get rid of that lines over there so with this what we'll do is gonna go down it's gonna slightly cut into the uh, the palm slightly and what we'll do is curve off that palm there and once we've got that we'll go slight, slightly a little line across and then we go up and a little curve to the bend and at the top of the bend we'll just, yeah we'll just curve that bit there and give that a bit of a point and then go down like that with that bit there and then what I will do is I will probably just extend uh, the, the bottom of the palm slightly uh, well yeah the bottom of the hand since it's a little bit more showing so with this line I'm gonna go curve it and then so something like that and then we'll go up I'm happy with that and now we've got that what I can do is just slightly since we didn't have enough space I had to bend this out slightly I can go and bend this downwards a little bit more that will look better with that and then we'll just improve that line over there and I'm happy uh, with uh, this now it's a bit better we can get rid of the old lines that we don't need of course and then I'll sort out the uh, the wrist of this hand also with it uh, having this over here and what we can do is just do this uh, like that and then we can get that old line we had and that'll go down uh, a little bit more and have something like this uh, we can get rid of the old line. Well, it'll look a lot better. So now we've got that. What we'll do is we'll move on to the right, uh, left hand, sorry. And uh, so with this, what we'll do is we'll curve the top like that, since it's going slightly above the thumb, and it's going up. Basically, doing a similar line on the top, but we're just extending it. So you got that, and then get rid of the old top line. And what we'll do is we'll now curve in uh, the knuckle for this first finger. And we'll just not make that line too bold, of course, because we don't want it to take up too much space. So we've got that. And then we'll go with this. Bend that finger like that. So it's, a simple, it's like a lo load of arrows almost going upwards. Uh, really the bends in the finger with how you, you can draw them and what I'll do is I'll get rid of a load of these lines since it'll make it a lot easier for me to draw in lines if I don't have a load of lines around the lines I want to draw as well so got that there for that finger sorted and then we can draw the next finger and the last one of course in there for the uh, knuckle parts of the finger uh, so with the bend of this next finger, what we'll do is make sure it's in line with uh, the knuckle. So with this, go like that. And then downwards in like that. And you'd have it uh, curve on this side here. A gap and then there's this. It curves. And eventually what we'll do is curve off the end as well. It's really scruffy, but hopefully you can see the idea that I'm trying to get with this. And what I'll do is I'll point off this from a little bit more. So it's, it's, it's pointing a little bit more downwards. So something like that. And then for this last pinky finger on the hand, we'll get rid of all this unneeded lines now. Since I'm happy with everything where it's going, I can see where it's going. And so we've got this 
Uh, so it's the same again, going down. And what we'll do is actually I will, I went down a little bit too much there, <laughs> just realizing. Um, we go this angle as you want to keep it in line with things a little bit more there for that. So we've got this uh, finger and what we're going to do is go down to about there. And then we go across and uh, we'll go eventually up for the, the 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 fold the bends in the finger and then like that to finish off there and then we can draw in uh, the rest of the palm so everything's better all right so we've got that and we'll now just improve that outside line looks better and we can curve off that top there and make that uh, wrist look even better all sorted all good I'm happier with that now you can now just check the size of the hands and see if they look right and then I can adjust them if I need to and everything and just get rid of those lines I don't forget about those also you don't want to forget about that of course yes yeah, so that's definitely I'm happy with that so having a look at that you can kind of see things and looking at that to how it is on the other hand what I all I need to do is just something as simple as moving the uh, knuckle parts out a little bit more so we don't have a hand that looks too squashed really so uh, I'll have a look at how it is on a bigger view and then you kind of would be able to see a little bit better how it would look and yeah I think it, it shouldn't be too hard of a fix really and yeah just adjusting that and I'll be happy with that I guess yeah, we can always improve the uh, the finger lines if we feel like they're, they're causing the thing to make it look a little bit too small. And yeah, that, that'll... And also, I think what you can do, um, since if it's even easier, you can... Uh, if you're on a digital tablet, you can literally just move things across and see if you need to, like, resize. And does it look like it's got the same volume kind of thing? Or does it need to be slightly uh, bigger when you're looking at it? So having that, and then a look at that. Yeah, so I'm happier with that now. I think they're perfectly fine with what I need uh, with this drawing. I'm happy with that. So um, yeah, and if you feel like you need to do a few adjustments, like just moving this out, you can. Since, yeah, that might work even better if yeah, sometimes it can be the direction the finger's going just to make it look uh, right. So guys, having a look at this drawing, I'm really happy with how it's uh, turned out and is looking. I'm really, really happy with this. It's really looking super, just as uh, super silver. <laughs> yeah, super, super silver, <laughs> which is, uh, I guess, a good thing, I guess. Uh, you know, that's a great outcome to have. <laughs> so yeah, all I'm going to do off camera is I'm going to... Uh, basically get rid of all the unneeded lines clean this drawing up and I'm going to shade it off camera you guys can shade it it's pretty much self-explanatory the harder you press the darker tone you'll have so having a look at that you can see that I started off a little bit light and I can go even more light a bit depends if it picks it up on the um, uh, the recording software or not but you can see uh, about pen pressure or pencil pressure the more pressure you put on, the darker the tone will be. So if you want a lighter tone, you uh, press less uh, for your shading. But if you want a darker tone for more shadow areas of the drawing, then uh, of course you will uh, press darker. But if you have the sun on this side, it's likely you'll have a lot lighter on the top. But then underneath around these areas, you would have uh, shadows. And yeah, there, there is a reference drawing for this, which I will have shown in the video for you guys. So you guys can always have a look at that if you need to. And everything and yeah that's always good to have a look at a reference if you need to and yeah so hopefully this will turn out great and yeah i look forward to coloring this in after i cleaned up the drawing and shaded the drawing in so i'll see you guys when we're ready to color with the color time lapse so guys i have cleaned up my drawing of super silver the hedgehog and he's looking really really good i'm really happy with this drawing and i hope you guys like it as well and i hope your drawing has turned out really really good so far 
Obviously, if you want to cool your drawing, the time lapse of the colouring that I'm going to do will be next. But this is how silver looks if you want to do shading instead of colouring. So without further ado, this is Super Silver the Hedgehog colour time lapse. So there you go guys, that is Super Silver the Hedgehog once he has been coloured in. I'm really really impressed and happy with how this Super Silver has turned out with the colouring. 
and whether it's uh, this colored version of super silver or the shaded version of super silver in the pencil form i'm just really happy with both of them how they've turned out and i hope this tutorial was able to uh, give you a few extra tips that you didn't know about and just help you improve your drawing and you've come away from this learning something and yeah i hope you're uh, happy with this drawing that I've done as well and I hope your drawing has turned out whether you watch this tutorial to help you with your uh, different silver the hedgehog drawing or if you're copying the drawing that I'm using the same reference and th this picture and following along in this uh, tutorial and if you did enjoy the video be sure to hit that like button that'd be very much appreciated to show your support on the channel and this video that'd be great and I'd very much appreciate that and if you're new around here and you'd like to see more from me, whether it's drawing tutorials or video game content such as Minecraft Bedrock Survival World, and currently I'm also doing a Minecraft series of Minecraft Dungeons. So if you'd like to watch that on the channel and keep up to date with those videos, then be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you're interested in drawing tutorials as I do, Sonic characters, cartoon characters, all sorts. So I do have a drawing playlist on my channel and I should have it linked in this video as well. So you should be able to find that wherever it's at the end on my end screen or in the description below. I've got a lot of different uh, links to different videos if you want to learn how to draw other uh, characters as well from Sonic the Hedgehog. And yeah, just learn how to uh, do it with the drawing tutorials. And be sure to have the notification bell turned on so you don't miss an upload as soon as I release a video. That'd be very much appreciated. So once again, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I hope you have a great rest of your day, week, wherever you guys are from. Stay safe in this time where we're in the pandemic right now. I'm sure we'll get through it as soon as possible. We're edging near a time where things are starting to... Uh, come back to normal a little bit but of course we need to make sure we stay safe in this time so that things can truly get back to normal if <laughs> they can get back to normal so yeah I'm sure you guys will make the right decisions in uh, following the legislations the guidelines followed and I'm sure you'll stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next video bye